Sagittarius singles, welcome. Gonna do your meet the soulmate read now. This is for the first half of October, say the first through the fifteenth. Well, ready shuffled. That's the eight card pull, and what I'm looking at here is for who's the right one for you. Who's the one that uh, spirit has for you? That's the right one. So it's inherently a positive reading. If you're easily triggered, this is your reading. Uh, is there anything bad here? If you do see like three of swords pop up, don't freak out. It's not that kind of reading. Um, now I look at the four aspects, um, two cards for each, the emotional, intellectual, sexual love, and core values and lifestyle. Call that the four pillars. And I try to get an idea of what your person's like, uh, personality, behavior, um, pull some astrology. So keep that in mind. Um, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. For you guys, uh, like, share, subscribe, appreciate it. Really appreciate subscribing. Appreciate commenting. Comments help a lot. If you want to help the channel, you want to be nice, hit the like. <clears throat> I've been hitting likes for years. I almost always hit. If I watch something, I'm going to hit the like. <laughs> I'm Sagittarius. What can I say? So let's get started here. We're going to look at their emotional position. The Emperor. Wow. Okay. Um, in the six of wands so also read the moon here and i'm gonna definitely go with an aries moon that's like super strong so your soulmate's gonna have an aries moon i want you to be able to know them um, pretty easy to get astrology now basic astrology dates <laughs> if you and or easy times not so easy um, but at least you, you're gonna know uh, with any luck you'll know the moon um, here, Aries moon pretty distinct from Gemini uh, moon uh, or uh, from a Taurus moon or uh, Pisces moon. So now we're looking at the intellectual position, justice over the devil. So here you got Libra and Capricorn coming in. Um, let me leave that a minute and think about it, but in terms of the intellect, um, very powerful intellect, both major arcana. Um, their moon is very powerful too. Uh, with the emperor here, it's the conscious position, unconscious position, six of wands. I think they had a good childhood. I think, I get the feeling this is an only child. They may tell you that story, they were an only child. They may have been a bit pampered. I'm tempted to say silver spoon. <laughs> But a bit pampered. Um, probably had solid parents, uh, both of them working, a uh, lot of money, professionals, um, that kind of thing. A lot of attention paid to this child as they were growing up. Um, they probably got a, a really good education. Um, you know, there are lawyers. <laughs> I will refrain from my favorite lawyer joke. <laughs> in case uh, your soulmate here is one of them. And I told you it wouldn't be triggery, so I won't go there. But you know, lawyers happen. I mean, that's a, that's a very literal read. Um, but they have that kind of mind. And it'd be a real interesting combination because with the devil down here in the unconscious, um, this is someone that really is kind of light and dark. Like they understand the light and they understand the dark because there's your balance with justice uh, in terms of their intellect. It's a little bit unusual. It, you can tell it's not a Leo moon because it's not how Leo moons would act. So this to be clear, this is a person that's very comfortable. Their unconscious and conscious is close. Uh, they, uh, they're able to recognize their own unconscious. They can easily interpret their own dreams, probably your dreams. Um, <clears throat> And they probably have access to that. So they probably someone's going to be intuitive. They're going to be very intelligent, very well educated and intuitive. And they're in touch with their gut. You know, like they, and like literally, like they might feel something in their gut. Oh, I know what that's about. It's about that situation right there. Um, so like really connected too, I think physically. Um, they might tell you that. Like they have a good sense of smell, good sense of taste. Um, this kind of person could be a taster, <laughs> too. Um, I might, they might have that kind of ability. You know, like they can just taste food, they tell you everything that's in it. Well, you've got this and that and this and that kind of in it. 
I get the feeling too that they the person be kind of worldly, you know. And I don't know if they have money, but they kind of come uh, not from wealth and from plenty, and more than just money. Uh, you know, they come from a background where there was concern about the world and history and art and literature, and so they they're a big person. I get that. They're big. Their mind is big. Their soul is big. Uh, sexually, Knight of Swords and love, we read here. Uh, this is the coming at you, Knight of Swords, coming at you. So you take that as you will. That's air energy. I haven't decided on a sun yet. Libra is, uh, jumps out the most. And then we have the Three of Cups in the sexual energy. Now, this is not going to be about third parties um, with them. But I tell you what I get out of it. We're going to have a Libra sun and Aries moon. And I think what we're going to have here then um, is uh, Libra, Venus, and the closest water really would be Scorpio, um, Libra, Mars, Libra, Mars, and, a, and a, I'd like to say a Cancer, probably going to be a Scorpio, Venus. That would work with the devil, I guess Scorpio, Venus. Uh, energy because uh, it can be very intense so if they had a Libra Sun and a Venus um, and Scorpio and also had a Libra Mars that would make sense um, and also again with this Libra energy it's like I get this feeling like this person's a uh, really well mannered like uh, charming as hell man or woman they they uh, but like they could have literally went to like a finishing school literally that could be a story they tell you oh let me tell you what went on at the finishing school I went to uh, before college you know um, and then in terms of love uh, with the Libra energy and the Venus and Scorpio it's going to be kind of conflicted for them um it's again with the light and dark though. This works with me. I said they're light and dark. They can go either way. So maybe they do that sexually. Normally Libras, you know, they're not, you know, going to be kinky and uh, into like uh, going into the obsessive, dark, uh, plutonic uh, type of uh, energy. Uh, but this person might. Their Venus is in Scorpio. Um, and we have this devil here. It could have Mercury and Scorpio too. That makes sense to me. Um, and maybe their Mercury and Venus is conjunct and it really puts their mind on the Venusian Scorpio way of looking at things. If you know, I mean, the Venus debilitated there. Um, I believe that a, a Scorpio Mercury is wicked smart. Wicked smart. Um, and that would make sense with them too. Like, I put it this way. Another thing about this person, even though they're kind of Ivy League, they're not Biff or whatever with the sweater. This is someone that's very uh, down to earth. Um, they get things. They get sex. They get the darkness. They get that there's bad people. Um, they get that there's narcissism. Um, they get these things. Um, so it's an interesting combination. I just think like with this Libra Mars, they might be a, um, it almost like might work um, maybe more like a, like a Scorpio Mars, you know? Um, maybe it's near the cusp. <clears throat> I'm not really believing cusp energy, but I feel like they're picking it up like that. I'm kind of showing my prejudice against Libra Mars, honestly. <laughs> But I think it's very sexy, Libra Mars, the way that's coming at you. And maybe kind of aggressive, you know. And maybe uh, like uh, yeah, verbally aggressive. Like, um, and I get the sense here, I can, I can see it. It's like, because uh, it, now with the Three of Cups too, there's a charming nature to it. Um, there, you know, I see like seduction. Like there's a charming nature and a really, ah, oh, man. It's like witty, it's like at the same time to be just charming and sweet as hell. And they will just slay you with some sexual uh, innuendo or, or something and just come on really strong. 
Um, it's like, uh, which I think would be pretty hot. It definitely is that theme of light and dark. It's like they're light, you know, but they get the dark. You know, I don't, I don't see any, any like darkness with this person here. So Aries Sun, Libra. I mean, uh, Aries Moon, Libra Sun, and pretty much going to be a Mercury and uh, Scorpio and a Venus and Scorpio. And they may have some kind of connection. Maybe they're conjunct. Um, I got the feeling they're conjunct. I think that's where this energy is coming from in the Mars, which makes it drawn towards a more Scorpionic feeling about it, you know, in terms of their sexuality, particularly, and even their love nature, you know. Um, like uh, Libras might be typically more flirty and stuff, you know, here it's more expressed as kind of, they're kind of possessive, you know, that Venus energy in Scorpio. So the moon this is coming in there, um, core values and lifestyle. Moon and the Seven of Cups, wow. That is one hell of a combination to have. I got to tell you, I, I think this is a um, person, um, they could be a trust fund baby, but they could be someone that, uh, they maybe haven't had to work for money either. I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying, lucky them, we all got our cross the bear. I don't think they were really ever, like if they went to college, if they did, Whatever they did, it, it, they, they didn't really do it because they had to do it to make money. So imagine now for a moment that they're really intelligent um, and curious and interested in the world. They come from this big background where their parents, you know, they know geography. They've flown there with their parents to Europe and everywhere. Um, and now they're kind of wide open. They have some money. They can study anything they want. Uh, they can't do anything they want. And you got the moon and the seven of cups here, guys. I'm just getting the weirdest feelings. They might practice witchcraft. Uh, and they may, like, study it. Um, this has got the energy to me is, like, very esoteric. Uh, writer. We're going back to that Mercury and Scorpio now and Venus. That's your desire and your thoughts. You know, maybe there's some 8th house action going on with them too. Sun's in the 8th house, along with Mars in the 8th house, can they're conjunct. Or, you know, maybe you have their uh, Venus in the 8th house with Mercury there. Um, it could go any way like that, or the moon there. I mean, um, put stick Aries in the 8th house, it's hot in almost anything you put in there. But... This really speaks to me of someone, they do something really unusual. Um, they do what they want, they do what interests them. I think that whatever it is they do, I can say this, help identify them, it's gonna be utterly unique. They're gonna say to you, I am a, I do, and what follows is gonna be something you've literally never heard before. You know, it could be, I am Batman, maybe. You know, it's going to be that weird. It's going to be like, like it, when they tell you, you might for a second go, if you hadn't watched this, you normally probably be like, uh, say again? Uh, what? And um, it'd be that unusual. And interesting, I'm kind of curious myself. When you meet them, this is meant to be upcoming, someone you probably haven't met yet, they're coming into your life. Get back to me and leave a comment and just let me know, hey, I met this wide open dude. And our chick and here's what happened Dave so thank you I appreciate that guys